The street cart I drove helter-skelter down Nicholas Hill as a boy, praying that the wheels would keep hold of terra firma, wheeling madly down from the grotto out onto Douglas Street, and part of me hoping that the steering eye would fly off, never to land at all. There's a tradition of um, books and journals being made of paper, which goes right back to ancient Egyptian times. I mean, the book still has an important place, an irreducible place, I would say, indispensable in the literary world. And I think there's something sacred about paper. It's the way our civilization, the way our knowledge has been handed down from the medieval monks up to the present day. When you look at print journals, it makes that all the more sort of special, um, especially to writers where you, you have the product in your hand, you have the proof, the, the, um, the object of the poetry, rather than just this nebulous um, poem out there in the, in the web somewhere. There's a great tradition in this country of that kind of journal going back to, you know, the Bell, the Kilkenny magazine the Dublin magazine, um, and as I say, the mix of content. In literature, the notion of owning, possessing, having a book, a book as a compendium, a book as a work of art, a book as a reference point, this is uh, still absolutely crucial. So I think no matter how many Kindle or e-books have been produced, I think there's a special quality about paper. And I think poetry and fiction um, perfectly complement the, the sacredness of paper. To, to say one or two, or two things about this review, I suppose the one thing about it is is that, it, is that it's eclectic, it has a good mix, poetry, fiction, uh, a short story from uh, a cork writer, and it's especially strong on, strong on interviews. For me, I've known the poet Eleni Quillanon for quite some time. I've known her for possibly up to 40 years, and I read the interview which James Harper did with her, and I found out things I just... I never realised about it. One of the strong points I suppose one of the signature things of the review is that, it, that it's always mixed. It, it has a core of established writers, but it's always introduced new uh, and emerging writers. And of course, that's part of the, of the ethos of the house of Tigfilly as well as an art centre, is that, um, that it inspires young people. Um, what I really love as an emerging, emerging writer with the Quirk Literary Review is that we're included in the conversation with huge writers like, you know, Ilya Kaminsky. And I think it's great for more established writers to be able to see, you know, in an uh, easy format exactly who is coming through and see the range of different voices in one handy uh, anthology. And it's actually one of the nice things about the way this journal uh, is, is sort of put together is Poets, all, in, in many literary journals, uh, you, you get a compartmentalization of a writer's work where it's all together. In this particular journal, it's, uh, it's spread throughout, uh, which uh, I think has a, an interesting effect in how people might read the work, uh, which, which is something I quite like. I suppose the other major interview in the book is with, with James A. Sharkey, who, who's Ireland's most distinguished and travelled ambassador. Because if you think about it, what an extraordinary thing it is for a country such as Ireland, a small Western European country, 
and that through the power of its literature, its writing, its writers, that places like the town lands of County Derry, the inner streets of Edwardian Dublin, the lakeland of Sligo and North Galway, um, the Cork of O'Fallon and O'Connor, these are all part of the imaginative inheritance of young people from distant countries, some of whom have never been to Ireland, some of whom may never get to Ireland. It gives us an extraordinary age.